Sure, no problem. You want to do a question? You just want me to talk? Just talk first and we'll ask questions after. Sure. Um, so, what we saw today was a drastic reduction from the suggested sentence from the federal probation department and even from the requested sentence of the government. Um, <clears throat> the judge coming down to 18 months and the things that she said was a clear recognition of the uniqueness of this case. This case is a case of first impression in the United States of America. Um, the purchase of a completely legal restraint chair, which is used throughout the United States, both in federal, state, and municipalities, um, for the first time, a sheriff, without any notice that you can be prosecuted, was in fact prosecuted. Um, and and so it was important to note that the judge took into consideration all of the uh, things that Victor Hill did for the community, and more specifically at the Clayton County Jail. Um, also important to, to note that uh, a very important theme that we had is that this case was prosecuted by the Department of Justice, the same Department of Justice that is completely ignoring the use of, of solitary confinement, um, both in the federal jails here, in local jails, and throughout the United States. The statistics are robust that 8% of federal detainees at some point in this country are in solitary confinement, but you don't see the Department of Justice prosecuting and investigating its own people, just going after what we call the shiny object, and that is Victor Hill, who has incredible notoriety and somebody that the community recognizes. The fact that he's been singled out um, to us still remains somewhat of a, of a disgrace. And it also remains a disgrace when you look at what's happening at our, what our own U.S. penitentiary. So take your cameras down to the U.S. penitentiary and see how people are living in their own feces, see how rats are in there, see how people are shanking one another, which didn't take place at the Clayton County Jail under the leadership of, of Victor Hill. And we wanted to make sure that we pointed those things to her honor's attention. And obviously you saw the sentence was drastically reduced. Um, we had hoped that there would be no incarceration um, but the drastic reduction was uh, a sharp contrast to that which federal probation and that which the U.S. Attorney's Office was, was asking for. Um, if there's any questions, if not... Do you ask to exercise an appeal? Yes, yeah, so uh, there is 100% going to be an appeal. Uh, there's going to be an appeal on several grounds, uh, but one of, one of which is the fact, if you look at the filings, that there's no notice. So notice means that you know that something that you're doing could be a crime, right? You know if you go into a bank and you have a gun and you ask for the money, that's robbery, right? You know if you take a gun and you shoot somebody, that is assault or could be murder. But there is no notice in the correctional facilities, both locally or anywhere in the United States, that if you use a legally purchased restraint chair, right, with two American corporations sell all over the country, thousands and thousands of them, that you can be prosecuted. Remember that there could, be, could have been a consent decree, right? Very simply, the Department of Justice could have come in and said, Sheriff Hill, we think you're doing this wrong. We want you to either suspend or modify your use over the next 12 or 18 months. They chose not to do that. And they chose to just prosecute him. That is a notice issue. And to us, that's a violation of due process that will be appealed. And of course, the issue that jumps out of all of you that were with us, which is that the jury was out for four days and the juror that held out was brought out for individual questioning, which was uh, somewhat unheard of um, in my experience. And the 11th Circuit also points out the kind of uh, uniqueness and, and weirdness of that. Can you talk about your concerns about where the uh, sheriff will be incarcerated? Well, we just want to make sure that he goes to what's called a minimum security camp. Um, and that is so that he is in the most secure setting possible. He is a law enforcement officer, and um, he has been dealing with people charged, charged with crimes, both as an elected sheriff and as a homicide detective. And so you don't know when, given that he's been in law enforcement, who he's gonna encounter in a correctional facility, and he's gonna have somewhat of a target, and we wanna make sure that he is in as much a secure and safe setting as possible.
Sure. So uh, first, let me say that we had um, a, a lot of letters that were uh, sent to the court, and we receive a lot of letters all the time. And some of them are on point and some aren't, so we have to kind of select through and pick uh, the ones that seem most appropriate and are going to be most helpful, in this case for Her Honor, Judge Ross, uh, to help her um, deliberate and make a decision as to sentencing. And she specifically talked about those letters. So those letters were, for example, people from um, homeowners associations that talked about the fact that Victor Hill, albeit a, a, an elected sheriff that you think is you know, worried about the jail and, and arresting people, would come out to a homeowners association and talk to the homeowners association about what he can do in his sheriff's department to make the community and their neighborhood safer. Um, we had letters from people that said they literally drove down the road and saw the sheriff's car and Victor Hill on the side of a street picking up trash. Um, we had letters from and people that were there to testify that had actually been detainees. They'd actually been in the Clayton County Jail and were no longer using illegal substances, narcotics, um, because of the influence and the structure that they say that they received um, while in the Clayton County Jail. Um, we had a very famous person in the music industry, a gospel singer, um, that talked about the citizen, um, Victor Hill, the sheriff and citizen, um, how he heard about the passing of one of her relatives and made sure that he was there to support her family. We had several of those um, people that were somewhat familiar with him but had a sick or dying or a deceased relative and how as the sheriff he came to make sure that they and their family members were, were safe, healthy and secure and try to see what he can do during that difficult time. That's unique. Uh, we have 159 counties in this state. Um, I challenge you to find any of the other 158 sheriffs that are picking up garbage on the side of the street or making sure that people have sick loved ones are okay or making sure they have somebody from their sheriff's department attending each and every funeral in their county. Who is Victor Hill? Well, I mean, I think we, we heard and the judge went out of her way to, to, to talk about the fact that Victor Hill is somebody that his lifelong dream was to be in law enforcement. Um, while, you know, some grow up with the ambition of being a, a doctor, a, a professor, a baseball player, um, a nurse, an engineer, a camera person, a news person, Victor Hill wanted to not only be in law enforcement, but to lead a law enforcement organization. Um, that was his dream. And um, I think that's the best way to, to summarize who he is. I don't think there's any significance to that. I think that you're in Clayton County, so that's important to you. But what that tells the rest of us is that he wanted to abide by the terms and conditions of the probation, which is that the supervised release. The supervised release says he can't be in law enforcement, either by proxy or directly. And he wanted to make sure with the court, right then and there, he wanted to show his respect for the system by saying, if I do political campaigning, is that a violation to which the judge said it is not? I mean, I, 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 I think that he's just absorbing everything right now. Um, this is a lot for him to take in. It's a lot to take in because he is somebody that um, his mission has always been to uphold and enforce the law, and he's in a position that's unique to him. Um, but he has always been somebody that has displayed an incredible strength and intestinal fortitude, and I think he's probably leaning on that strength and intestinal fortitude as we speak. Can you so. tell us what the timeline is? Well, so <clears throat> there'll they'll be an appeal. I mean, and um, the appeal is, you know, you got to get a transcript and, you know, we'll, we'll start doing everything in the appellate process. Um, I, I will tell you that, you know, a lot of people make kind of that knee-jerk reaction, we're going to appeal, you know, kind of go into autopilot. Um, but this is an incredibly viable appeal. This is just not any appeal. These are some incredibly... Um, unique issues and I think her honor highlighted right in the in her opening statement today before sentencing the uniqueness of, of this case and the uniqueness of this case will really highlight um, how we approach the appeal yeah, so speaking of last question you speaking of the uniqueness um, he is the only one that's been prosecuted for something like this despite that and even the, um, the other side they said in cases where um, other people 
who have been um, prosecuted, they were prosecuted for punching and things like that. Yeah, yeah. So that was that was a um, that was an important uh, issue that we argued and the judge referenced, right? Which is that there really were no cases to look at around the United States, and hence kind of the point that Victor Hill had no notice about this. The cases that you see involve cases where people are tasing, they're shooting guns, they're hitting people with batons. Um, there's no allegation that Victor Hill had any physical contact, any physical contact with anybody detained at the jail. Um, there is no allegation, right, since he's not the one that did it, that's a great question, that at his behest, somebody was physically injured, someone was hit, someone was tased, nothing like that at all. And that's what makes this case really unique, is that there's not this conspiracy, there's not these multi-defendants. And look, these are all issues that are gonna have to be parsed out and dealt with in the appeal of this truly unique case. But that being said, I got work to do. I had other cases. No, I have another question though. You, you, I want to, I really want you to sort of thumbnail what you said upstairs because you said no prior notice. Why was there no prior notice? Why was there no, to your point, consent decree brought here? What was that, why go straight to the prosecution? Uh, I, I wish I can answer that question because I think it's unfair. Um, so I, I appreciate you asking that, but that's not for us to do. We're not the government. We're just defending the, this gentleman. And so um, we would have expected that. We would have expected that the Department of Justice that is at the podium talking about due process and talking about constitutional rights would, would address the issue of fairness, would address the issue of, hey, we know that 99.999% of the time you're doing all these other things for the betterment of the community. We want to have our civ civil division reach an agreement with you and have a consent decree. That's on them, not on us. Um, but we'll raise that issue. You can rest assured, get ready to read about it. We're going to be doing it. What's your response to the statement from the judge that Victor Hill's love of law enforcement was less than, or should I say his love for power superseded his love for law enforcement? Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to, you know, second guess anything her honor said. Um, Judge Ross is was doing her, her, her sentence at the time, and she had a message to get across. Um, that's really not a legal issue. Um, so I'll talk about legal issues and the underlying factual issues. Did he have a power problem? That, that's, that's just, that's just, that's just a silly question. So I, let's, let's, yeah, let's not go like, you know, tabloid over there. So these are all great questions, but I'm not going to answer tabloid questions. That's silliness. Politically motivated is what uh, the former sheriff said when these charges were brought. Well, <clears throat> the only thing I could keep on going to is the lack of notice. Uh, I just, the lack of notice is, is, you know, I'm just going to repeat that theme. And what the reasoning was, we'll, we'll never know. Um, but there's a nation full of law enforcement officers that are using these restraint chairs. Um, do the research, you'll see there are two major corporations that are selling them as we speak. As we speak, there are salesmen, saleswomen in county jails, municipalities, institutions, private jails all over America right now doing sales pitches, selling six, 10, 12 of these. Um, but I'll tell you what, these sheriffs and these law enforcement officers uh, are going to need to have to think long and, and hard about this because uh, out of nowhere, with absolutely no notice, Victor Hill was prosecuted for the use of it. So, anyway, Thanks, I'm good. Thank you. Appreciate y'all.